Oh, yeah, this is a fast-moving story. You were just in Creta, in the Greek islands. Now you're in Istanbul. In fact, you're out of Istanbul. Yeah, Sphinx grabbed that rolls, huh? And shh, his guru is dying in Cappadocia. He's got to get over there, huh? Yeah, I mean, your first instinct, you get across the, those Bosphorus Straits uh, to Uskadar, and you just want to go fast. You, look, The vastness of the road ahead of you is just, like, almost overwhelming. Istanbul, Kathmandu, 5,000 miles. Istanbul, Goa, 8,000 kilometers. <laughs> I have an international audience. I have to, you got to, like, uh, you know. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Um, suddenly. Europe seems like a cozy park, huh? Well, okay. Sphinx is at the wheel. Now that dad huh? spoils him, huh? Um, Pasha is navigating, you know, riding shotgun, as you could say, in the American frontier. Yeah. And uh, Osafo, uh, Safo oh, oh, is in the back seat, huh? I'm going to tell you a little bit about them because the main in-depths uh, all about them is coming after, uh, right after uh, uh, Omar, uh, whatever happened to him, huh? Well, what you need to know about Safa, okay, she's from Brooklyn. She's six foot four, 240 pounds. It's all muscle. She's a boxer. She's a lesbian boxer and massage parlor worker her first time in Istanbul or any Muslim country she is freaked out she thinks she might get kidnapped sex slave leaking Dow headed for United Arab fuck you every which way they can Republic now she's uptight huh and Pasha well he's He's an artistic prodigy, okay? Best-selling book. Just did a book reading tour in Amsterdam. They got 108 coffee houses over there. Bullfrog. Grasshopper. And so on. Yeah, big, big hit tour, but uh, yeah. So he's headed for India. He had enough of that. You know, people follow him around, sign my book. He's headed for India for the second time. Oh, yeah, you got this. Uh, yeah, Rolls Royce trip to start it. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, 5,000 miles to go. So, fortunately, so he's not going anywhere near that, there. We're just talking like 450 miles, you know, 10 hours overnight. Let's, you know. You know, okay, so, uh, yeah, it looks at his watch, huh? It's an imitation, Rolex. Ro 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 Rolex. <laughs> yeah, that is not more bizarre, huh? whatever you want. Pierre Cardin? Yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's midnight. Easy time to remember. Yeah, and then he drives the rolls up on the metal rampway to the car ferry. Is that a fast way to start a trap? Well, 50 years ago, Istanbul, no goddamn bridges across the Bosphorus, huh? Now they have 17 of the spanners. Yeah, on the car ferry. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. well, he shifts in the first gear. I mean, don't jam it up from the first shift. And, uh, yeah, he lightly touches the accelerator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, I mean, this is a powerful machine, okay? We're talking about vintage car freaks. I mean, this is as vintage as, as, as you can. You can put gas in. It's a dream machine. It's a 1954 Park Ward handcrafted rolls, and how strong is the engine? 
Oh, you got a Harley, huh? You got the big one? 1,200 cubic centimeter one? This car, 5,675 cc's, huh? Yeah. You see those eight, eight, eight cylinders all in a slant, huh? They're not all mixed up within each other. Slant them down. Aluminum alloy, not just cheap l aluminum. Don't wrap a tin foil over a combustible engine. Or you have a barbecue all over yourself when that explodes. How many were these handcrafted? 16 only. And only for diplomatic missions. Yeah. That's why Sphinx father, Tutankhamen, huh? He got one because he's the ambassador. Egyptian ambassador to <laughs> the Turks. Smog choked Ankara. All right, look. You need the big picture, the, the helicopter. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. The helicopter view. All right, the, the first 300 miles from Istanbul to Ankara, that's the major road. That takes about six hours. You got to blow past there up to the Crescent River. Whoa, well, up to the Crescent River. And then down the Crescent River, three hours. Oh, the road gets really, really lovely over there. Would you get that chopper out of the picture? Yeah, they're crossing that forlorn monotonous Alatolian plateau. Yeah. So, um, why do they leave at midnight? Fatima, why would they leave at midnight? Oh, um, there's no traffic at midnight, okay? Because in the daytime, it's the main road. It also happens to be the Hashi Trail section of the road. Lorries with stupid ass uptight Turkish drivers, excuse me, uh, honking, shouting, smoking cigarettes, one after another over there, huh? And what do they do? How do they drive? They drive, it's called the Inshallah. <laughs> Way of driving it means if Allah wills, I won't kill you. I'm passing you uphill. Move over, bitch. Oh, blind curve. Who cares? I got Allah in my oh heart. Oh, well, yeah. Better drive at midnight on that. But there's there's a spiritual reason. Okay. I mean, we're talking Sphinx here. Okay, Egyptian mystic. You can't figure this guy out. Because you're in a Rolls Royce, the classic of the most classiest of everything ever car, and it's all cozy inside. It's black, like the paint job. And it's a freedom capsule bubble. Yeah, okay. It's mystical. And you can smoke your little travel hubble bubble discreetly. I mean, Turkey will bust your ass if they can make a few lira off you. You got to watch out over there, huh? Use a big dose of Afghanistan right about now. And um, you can fantasize. Little Sphinx, huh? He's fantasizing about the queen of Chitral. You know, you didn't know about this before, but, you know, remember the big fireworks display he made up in there? In the Kingdom of Astuj? For King Sharif and Queen Latif? And, oh, those exploding Roman candles. Felt like huh? Those things, huh? So the queen got him back in the Victorian Palace as he's packing up his Jeep, you know. And she said, uh... This antiques all, I mean, every, you're in an antique jewel box, okay? Nothing is more modern than 1860 here. 
But you know, these curtains are rotting under their own weight. I step behind the curtain with me because I want to show you something to turn you on. That's not an antique. It's fresh, like a fresh bud. And oh yeah, they, mm-hmm. That was a quickie on the way out, huh? Made it even more erotic, huh? Just, oh, time to go back to Peshawar. <laughs> but after, ever since then, he just wants to, uh -huh, get turned on again, huh? Oh, yeah. Major crush. Mm. Queen Latifah. Huh? Oh. Well, I have a major crush, too, you know, because I'm very meticulous never to offend the uh, Islamic culture, especially the fundamentalist ones, because I want to, like, keep my neck. Um, so I hired an Afghani woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to to fact check everything, fact Fatima. Yeah, uh, you're getting breakfast ready, huh? Okay. Um, everything, and uh, be my uh, like you know. In fact, look. Okay, Fatima. Fatima. Well, this is this is her glamour portrait. You know, she got in Kabul on her way out. Okay, she's like out of a job. Fatima Scheherazade. She was an interpreter for the Air Force at the Bagram Airfield. You know, biggest one in the Middle East. Yet she, she had to interpret. Okay, I'm okay. Mufti, Mufti, come over here. I want to get you together. <clears throat> and and okay. Corporal, come here. I'm going to get you together, okay? We need, you know, the good stuff, okay? Take back to the air base. Keep people mellow. Uh, what do you think of this, Fatima? That hash is low grade. Hey, Mufti, what are you trying to pull here? We, wait, what's that? We need Balkistani hand pressed, okay? She she interpreted it, but then Biden said, "Whoop whoop, pull the carpet out from them, huh?" Well, it took him twenty years to pull the carpet out. Get a little, little better uh, home repair crew than those guys, huh? Cost you a fortune. Well, trillions of dollars to pull the damn rug out. Well, I'll work for like fifty bucks an hour. You know. uh, thank you, Fatima. Oh, breakfast is almost ready. I, I'm I'm performing right now. As soon as you know, I'll get to a, a new new chapter.